Professor Pashauri, you and the IPCC are Nobel Peace Prize winners. How the struggle uh, related to climate change can be important to a more peaceful world? Well, I think if we allow climate change to continue unabated or unmitigated, we could have several situations get, that can lead to a disruption of peace and security. And this could be through competition for scarce resources like water, mm -hmm. which will be highly stressed in several parts of the world. It could be because of lack of food security, because the impact on agriculture will be harmful. As it is, we find there are riots taking place, people getting killed in South Africa and other places. Uh, so if we allow this situation to escalate, then clearly it has the potential of uh, affecting peace and security. And uh, last but not least, the problem of sea level rise, mm -hmm. which threatens the existence of all the small island states and a large number of coastal areas across the globe. So, you know, I think it's extremely important to look at the link between peace and climate change. The deforestation of the Amazon rainforest make Brazil, as you probably know, the fourth biggest responsible for emissions, and the Brazilian government is facing many difficulties to diminish those rates. How do you see a conjunct action with other countries in the fight against this deforestation? How can be this cooperation? I think basically this is a challenge that Brazil has to face, as uh, would be the case with other countries that have large rainforests, mm -hmm. and these are countries in Southeast Asia and even parts of Africa. But um, I think what the world should do is to facilitate and help Brazil taking the right kinds of actions. But ultimately, it has to be a decision and an effort on the part of the Brazilian people and the government of this country. Mm -hmm. I don't think the outside world can do very much mm -hmm. in helping protect these rainforests. Mm -hmm. And uh, politics can be an ally or an enemy of science in issues like this, climate, cha clim climate change. How do you evaluate this, this scenario now, nowadays? Uh, politics is helping or not? Well, you know, the IPCC functions in a manner that requires all the governments of the world that are members of the IPCC to approve of each of our policymakers' summaries. That means the summary of each of our reports, word by word. And this is a very difficult and a long drawn out process, mm -hmm. but the benefit is that at the end of it, all the governments have to accept and have accepted the final findings of the IPCC. So in that sense, I think the IPCC is in a unique position where politics and science come together. Now it is for the politicians to use this science, mm -hmm. and in fact that is being done under the Framework Convention on Climate Change in the Bali Conference of the Parties, that's what happened. And I hope in the next two conferences of the parties also the same thing will happen. The science will drive the negotiations and the agreement that we get. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an increasing consensus around the idea that climate change uh, has anthropogenic causes. Uh, but the consensus is not achieved when we are discussing solutions. In your view, which are the main macro solutions science is underlining right now to the world about this? Well, I would say that, you know, the consensus will come from an acceptance of the fact that if we don't take action, mm -hmm. uh, the effects and the impacts of climate change will be disastrous for everybody, for the whole world. And I think this should be the motivating force. But based on this uh, realization, I would say it is very important for governments to take certain actions, more efficient use of energy moving away from the use of fossil fuels. And today that becomes even more important because oil prices are more than $130 a barrel. And the benefit of taking all those actions is that uh, you create local benefits as well, like energy security, lower pollution at the local level, uh, more jobs because of renewable energy use being used in, uh, renewable energy being used in rural areas and so on. So I think what we re really need is a shift from growing dependence on fossil fuels. In one word, I think that is the most important action that needs to be done. <coughs> and how do you evaluate this whole um, discussion about biofuels right now? Well, as far as biofuels are concerned, you know, <coughs> a 
as far as biofuels are concerned, any solution which requires a reduction in uh, output of food and, and food grains is really not a good solution. Uh, so I would say that the conversion of corn to ethanol or the conversion of palm oil to uh, biofuels is really not a good approach. We should look at those options and those solutions where there is no conflict between food production and fuel production. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we also need a lot of research and development. For instance, for secondary conversion of, let's say, uh, cellulosic material mm -hmm. uh, to fuels. So, s development of secondary biofuel solutions is what we should be focusing on. It is, uh, it is too expensive to mitigate or adapt? No, it's not expensive at all. In fact, in the IPCC fourth assessment report, we have clearly brought out the costs, which are very low. And then if you add the benefits from so-called co-benefits at the local level, mm -hmm. in some cases, the cost may, can actually be negative. Mm -hmm. And you, society will benefit from taking those actions. So I think it's a myth. And it's completely wrong information to say that the costs of mitigation are going to be high. They are anything but high. To finish this, uh, two quick questions. The, the carbon and emissions trademark will transact perhaps $45 billion this year. Do you believe this is a good way out? I think it's a good way out. I'm sure there is a, a lot of improvement that can be brought about in the systems and the procedures by which the market functions. But I see the carbon market expanding globally in the years ahead. And I think it has a lot of merit because, you know, by placing a price on carbon, you would be creating an incentive for companies and, and governments to invest in new research and development mm -hmm. and new technologies. And even the consumer will react to those prices because if there's a price on carbon, then the consumer will move towards uh, low carbon solutions or low carbon products and processes. So I think uh, it's absolutely uh, important to see that uh, we have a price on carbon. And if we have a market for trading in carbon, then that price will increase and will emerge over a period of time. Mm -hmm. You, IPCC, is warning the world perhaps since 1988. Only recently these warnings are being listened more carefully. How do you evaluate? Why this change happened? Why now you are being taken so much into account? There are two reasons. Well, firstly, I think the fourth assessment report of the IPCC is a very strong report. Mm -hmm. It has come out with a lot of findings that clearly go beyond what previous reports were able to find because knowledge has improved, knowledge has increased. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is that I am deliberately going out and spreading the message. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why I'm here in Brasilia, because it's not enough to just produce good reports. We have to inform the public about the findings of that report. And I think that's having an effect also. Setting the agenda. Absolutely. And final one, what is uh, the importance of news media in these issues? And uh, uh, together with that, how do you evaluate the coverage nowadays? Oh, I'm delighted at the coverage that we are getting. And I must say the me media has an extremely important role to play because it's only by informing the public that we can bring about change in the right direction. So I would say the media should really uh, get a lot of credit for the awareness that has mm -hmm. increased in recent years. And I think uh, the role of the media is going to become even more important in the future. Are you optimistic for future? I'm totally optimistic. That's what keeps me going. That's why I can uh, go around the world. I don't tire. I sleep very little. But I'm optimistic and that's why I enjoy it.